Jared Poland, Photo.com, and this is your Photo News Fix. This fix is brought to you by Rode and their brand new Rodecaster Pro. If you've been wanting to start a podcast with friends or by yourself, this is going to kick major ass. You can connect up to four microphones and headphones. You can control all the audio levels, include phone interviews, buttons for jingles, and a lot more. I honestly can't wait for mine to come in the mail so I can record the Daily Fro. For more information on the Rodecaster Pro, head on over to bit.ly slash Rodecaster Fro. First up, if you're planning on going to the next photo Kina, which was supposed to be the first year of its new annual schedule, you might want to cancel your trip. Or don't cancel your trip and go to Germany anyway, if that's what you want to do. A photo Kina press release said the decision to postpone the start of the announced annual cycle by one year is intended to give all participants the opportunity to further develop develop the new concept for Photokina. Or what it should have really said is, we just had a Photokina seven months prior and no one was going to show up in May. Photokina also said that their 2018 exhibition exceeded expectations with 180,000 visitors from 127 countries. I was not one of those visitors since I felt the show was not worth going to anymore. In all honesty, I still believe companies should not attend photo trade shows I think they should put the marketing dollars towards other types of content like people like me and events that will garner them a lot more visibility than a one-off show. Do you think Photokina will be able to make a splash in 2020? Because I don't. Have you ever wondered how photographers make food look so amazing in photos and videos? Well, YouTube channel Blossom, not that Blossom, Dan, posted a two and a half minute video showing you the tricks of the trade. It starts off with cardboard spacers to give more height to pancakes, motor oil to replace syrup, Elmer's glue to act as milk, dish soap to help make beer stay fizzy, corn syrup and food coloring to make an awesome looking ice cream cone, and my favorite, microwave tampons that I hope are not used to create steam. That's funny, Dan, because, well, never mind, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that one go. I don't get it. So basically, like everything else we see online, from Instagram to YouTube to food photography, it's all bullshit. The moral of the story is, if something looks too good to be true, it's probably fake. I hate how fake Hollywood is. Are you one of the 12 people who still use Tumblr? No. Seriously, who still uses Tumblr anyway? I've never actually used it in the first place. Well, that's not actually true. I did stumble upon a few Tumblrs in the past that may have included artistic photos of women, and by artistic, I mean, well, nude. What else would I mean? I still don't get it. Well, the days of nudity on Tumblr are limited. Tumblr CEO Jeff D'Onofrio wrote, posts that contain adult content will no longer be allowed on Tumblr. And we've updated our community guidelines to reflect this policy change. I can hear the bronies crying now. <laughs> Here's what I have to say to them. Wah! You'll need to get your porn fixed somewhere else. Wah! It's really not that hard to find porn on the internet, people. Here's what Tumblr considers to be adult content. Adult content primarily includes photos, videos, or GIFs, some like to call them GIFs, where there's GIF, there's love, that show real life human genitals or females presenting nipples, and any content including photos, videos, GIFs, and illustrations that depict sex acts. So that means this photo is okay because they are man nipples. They're my man nipples, by the way, and this photo isn't because they're female nipples? If you're like me and wondering what about animal nipples, don't worry, those are still okay. Starting December 17th, automated tools will be used to identify and block adult content from being uploaded. If you already have adult content on your Tumblr, that content will be switched to private and only you will be able to view it. Are you upset about this new change? No. If so, Get a life. It's not that hard to find porn on the internet. And finally, Sony has released firmware version two 
for the Sony a7 III as well as the a7R III that unlocks even more autofocus modes for adapted lenses. Sony says the update adds support for zone, expand flexible spot, and lock on AF focus areas when using the LA-EA3 mount adapter. That LA-EA3 adapter is actually Sony's adapter that lets you adapt Sony's A-mount lenses to E-mount cameras, and Dan, I said adapt three times, but it's cool because it worked. Are there really many people out there who own Sony A-mount lenses? No, I don't, I don't think so. The big question is, how are third-party adapters with the new firmware? Well, DP Review shared their findings and they said, we've tested it with adapted Canon mount lenses as well and can confirm it works with EF lenses via Sigma or Metabones adapter. They also said, since IAF also works with adapted lenses, we've really started to see less and less of a downside to using third-party lenses on Sony cameras. Now that's a big win for Sony as one of the main issues with third-party adapters is the loss of important focus functionality. This is a big deal in my mind for people with a lot of Canon glass who have been looking to use it on Sony bodies. Is this update something that might cause you to take a closer look at using third-party adapters on Sony cameras? Let me know down below. And there you have it. That's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, hit that bell button, and I'll see you on the next video. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.